So nobody tomorrow can come and accuse us that we have closed the door of academia within the parameters where we are confident that we have mujtahideen, we have ulama, we have fudala, we have talaba who are so well versed that we went for a call of paper. A research institute requires you send a call for paper. Anybody can, people who are now challenging us, come for a debate, come for a, we don't debate with any person out there. When you want to discuss, the call of paper has come, present a paper. If you are academically qualified, it qualifies for this event. We have conferences and seminars, you know, all year round. So this is nothing new for us. Uh, it's good that they are having it for the first time. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We begin in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Esteemed scholars, my respected elders, my dearest youngsters, brothers and sisters in Iman, Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, this is further to the invitation that we had previously issued to the World Federation and to Aftab regarding a, the possibility of having a debate or dialogue between the traditional side and the revivalist uh, or reformist side of our scholarship who want to revive the teachings of Ahlul Bayt والسلام, that our communities have lost sight of, unfortunately. And so we had suggested and we had called for and expressed willingness to have dialogue and engagement on the specific topic of dua to ghayrullah, which is a primary and very conspicuous manifestation of ghulu, uh, which is uh, doctrinal and ideological extremism, which is condemned by the Imams of Ahlul Bayt and before them condemned by the Quran, when Allah says, Ya Ahlul Kitabi, la taghlu fi dinikum addressing the people of the book and scripture, he says, do not do ghulu in your deen. So one of the most uh, prominent and preeminent manifestations of ghulu, which has become extremely popular in our communities and which sadly and unfortunately is being defended by the traditional leadership and sometimes even the scholarship that sits on the mimbar. Some of them, not all of them. But yeah, they are defending uh, this form of ghulu, which is the practice of dua and talabul hajat, seeking hajat, asking your needs across the curtain of ghayb from the imams of Ahlul Bayt والسلام, or from the uh, Prophet. So, this is what we had issued an invite to the traditional side, uh, uh, represented by the World Federation and Aftab that we can have a dialogue and debate. And this was originally not our idea. See, we are happy to present food for thought to the uh, audience, to whosoever is willing to listen and reflect on the evidence we are presenting from the Quran and the authentic teachings of Ahlul Bayt, والسلام, we are happy and content with the platform that Al-Islah uh, has provided us with. So we are not asking for uh, this, uh, for our reach to be widened. We're not asking uh, for the mimbar, we're not asking for anything from these from, from the traditional side. If they want to boycott these kinds of presentations, or if they do not want to have anything to do with what we are presenting of the Quran and the teachings of Ahlul Bayt, we're not imposing ourselves on them. But because there was pressing demand from members of our community, from both the traditional side and uh, the reformist side, both sides united in saying, Oh, uh, especially on on the groups, you know, on social media, a lot of the people came out and said from the traditional and reformist side that look, um, okay, it's good that you're having monologues and uh, recorded lectures and you know Zoom sessions and all of that, but it it would also be very nice and beneficial for our communities if both sides come together on the same platform and let them have a civilized, respectful, courteous friendly, non-adversarial debate. They were not calling for a mudslinging match. And that's why Al-Islah admins also, they put the shart and condition that people of scholars of very high level akhlaq who are not knowing, who are not, who have not sullied their reputations by slandering Al-Islah or leveling buhtan against 
reformists or using unparliamentary and foul language, as we saw in some unfortunate cases uh, on the member itself, unfortunately, from the member of the prophet, there are speakers who have used very unpalatable and unpleasant foul language that is not befitting the school of Ahlul Bayt. But the people who are calling for dialogue and engagement were saying not with those uh, less learned and unfortunately poor akhlaq kind of speakers, but rather a courteous, civilized, academic, engaging dialogue between respectful, courteous, highly ethically disciplined scholars from both sides. This is what they were calling for. And so, and they said, look, otherwise there's going to be division, disunity in the community. So why not have a dialogue with the hopes of, you know, as Allah says in Surah Ali Imran, uh, Allah is inviting and asking the Prophet to invite the Ahlul Kitab, the Jews and Christians who follow the scripture, invite them, come to a joint word. Okay, we can have our differences, but at least there's, because we are all members of the Abrahamic uh, tradition, we, we have common ground. Let us at least agree to agree on those things that are agreeable. And then we can agree to respectfully disagree without being disagreeable on those issues that are outside the purview of consensus within the scholarship of our school. So this is what they were calling for. And this is why we responded to their demand. This was not originally our idea, but we saw that their de demand is genuine. So we issued the invite for dialogue and even de debate if they want, but with English speaking scholars, because our communities are largely English speaking. If you want a dialogue and debate in Arabic, there's already plenty of it, and even in Farsi. So in Arabic, there, there was engagement between Ayatollah Asid Muhammad Hussein Fadlullah, Grand uh, Merja, uh, who was a product of Najaf, and one of the leading students of Ayatollah Sayyid Abul Qasim al Khui, between him and Ayatollah Al Mirza Sheikh Jawad al Tabrizi. And this engagement, this debate was published. We refer to it in Previous Isnad sessions, the Ta'aliqat, okay, that was published. Ayatollah Sayyid Muhammad Sayyid Fadlullah also had dialogue and debate, hiwar, with um, Al Alama Sayyid Hashim Al Hashimi, one of the students of Zid Sistani. He's also product of the House of Najaf. Al Mirza Jawad al Tabrizi is also product of the House of Najaf, student of uh, Sayyid Al Khui. I'm mentioning the Najaf connection because Pramukh Saab was saying that whenever in the past 20 years we have um, had any problems or any confusions, any question, we have knocked at the door of Najaf -e Ashraf. So yeah, these debates have also been held in Najaf -e Ashraf. In Najaf -e Ashraf itself, you have the reformist revivalist camp and you have the traditional camp. But these debates in Arabic have, because of the language barrier, they have remained confined to the Arabic speaking world. Those that have happened in Farsi have remained confined to the Farsi speaking world. Our communities, especially the Khoja communities, people are, especially the youths, are English speaking. So they want English speaking dialogue. Not that we send Al Islah scholars um, to, for example, debate uh, someone like Ayatollah Al Qazwini, even though we proposed that. We nominated and we proposed the name of Ayatollah Al Sheikh Muhammad Al Hadi Al Yusufi Al Gharawi, who is a student. I was Mujtahid and student of Ayatollah Sayyid Abul Qasim Al-Khui in Najaf and also Ayatollah Sayyid Al-Khumaini. He's a student of the of the of both of the Sayyidin. And he studied Bahth al Kharij under them. And he clearly says, we quoted his statements before, don't make me repeat. He said, Dua tawassul aslan. I don't accept it is dua. Don't even dare to call it dua. Dua, he said, is when you exclusively call upon Allah. That that endure you call dua. Like dua kumail, for example. Dua mashlul. This is eon dua dua. Sawa. This tawassul that you are doing, he says, Baba, this is shirk and this is ghulu, this is against the teachings of Ahlul Bayt, and this is giving ammunition. It's giving ammunition to the Wahhabis and Salafis to attack the school of Ahlul Bayt and to uh, stain its reputation and to turn people away from it. This is who? Ayatollah al Sheikh Muhammad al Hadil Yusuf al Gharawi. And we quoted his exact words. We gave the translation. Go back to previous Al Islah broadcasts, you will find it there. So we know, when they were proposing, why don't you go debate Ayatollah al Qazwini? We said, if you were bringing Ayatollah, then we have Ayatollah for Ayatollah, right? Mujtahid for Mujtahid. You yourself would not find it respectful for Ninda Bacha to go and 
uh, debate Ayatollahs, right? So if it is Ayatollah, then uh, Ayatollah in Qum, then Ayatollah in Qum. If you propose an Ayatollah in Najaf, there are Ayatollahs in Najaf who can handle that, right? If you want an English language for the benefit of the uh, Awam, then we can have it with English speakers. And that's why we nominated uh, three speakers, of whom two are actually on the World Federation YouTube page. The Sheikh Muhammad al Hayli and the Sheikh uh, Noor Muhammad. Their photographs are there on the World Federation YouTube page. If the Al Islah admins um, have a shot of that, they can display it. You can see. So two of the scholars whom they are advertising on their on their uh, YouTube page, we uh, gave their reference. We gave, we nominated them, and uh, one scholar also is uh, a learned scholar with good akhlaq who is who has contributed to the previous seminar. Uh, that is a Sheikh, a Dr. Wine, Ketia. And there are other names that are also coming that are agreeable to Al Islah uh, admins. Like, for example, the name of Sheikh Jafar Ladak was proposed. We said his akhlaq is truly exemplary if he's prepared to represent the traditional side. Ahsantum, I've personally met him. I can personally vouch for the excellence of his akhlaq and his courteousness and his broad-mindedness as well and he also has a debating credentials in the sense that he debated i think with a christian or some far right person if i'm not mistaken and he also if i'm not mistaken uh, he delivered an excellent lecture on Hulu itself so he's not in the dark about Hulu as well we will have a lot of common ground inshallah the lecture was delivered at mahfil ali um, i don't know if the link is still available but if it is uh, perhaps al islah admins can link it, but it was an excellent lecture on, on Ghulu that he had tried to raise awareness about. So definitely he would be a great choice. Sheikh Abbas Ismail has been suggested. Sayyid Adil, although we are not too sure if Sayyid Adil would be willing to engage in English, it would be more an, of an Urdu speaking engagement, um, which we run the risk of, you know, many of the youths who don't understand uh, Urdu nowadays. Aslan, the whole reason why uh, there is so much demand for English speakers is because youth say that Urdu is not going to be able Bollywood movies are not going to be Urdu, Hindi, Hindustani, it is not going to be able to Ilmi Bahaso Mubahisa, Ilmi discussion, ke liye youths they have the excuse that we don't have Urdu. Nahi samajh mein aati. We want English. So that's why we are giving, we have no, uh, say the Adil, mashallah, we have heard lots of praises about his akhlaq. So we are not averse to having engagement with him, but preference to be given to English speakers so that especially the youths can benefit, right? Otherwise, Urdu may be hosakta, no problem. But preference, al-islah admins want to give to English. So let's focus on that first and then we can accommodate other things as well. But let's start with the basics. So we were giving this invitation and uh, then I received messages from some of our community members in Dar es Salaam. They said that Pramukh Saab, the head and president of, of World Federation, has responded to your invitation. So I was happy. And then uh, they sent a link and uh, over two hours. So I requested my students to prepare transcript, which they very kindly prepared for me, the transcript of the speech of uh, Pramukh Saab. But the interesting thing is when I looked at the transcript, so here... Uh, he did not respond uh, favorably to our invitation. Uh, here, here are his words. I will quote for you. And Al-Isla admins, if they have the link, perhaps they can even play so that I'm not misquoting. These are the words that I have on my transcript. He says, and I quote, we went for a, we went for a call of paper. A research institute requires that you send a call of paper. Anybody can. People who are now challenging us so I guess this was the reference that people saw uh, to, towards us. He says, people who are challenging us come for a debate, come for a, I think uh, the transcript indicates he did not finish the sentence, but I guess he meant to say, come for a debate, come for a dialogue. Then he responds to that by saying, we don't debate with any person out there. So nobody tomorrow can come and accuse us that we have closed the door of academia within the parameters where we are confident that we have mujtahideen, we have ulama, we have fudala, we have talaba who are 
so well versed that we went for a call of paper. A research issue requires you send a call for paper. Anybody can, people who are now challenging us, come for a debate, come for a, we don't debate with any person out there. Um, okay. But then uh, some of the al Islam members were writing to me saying that we don't understand what does he mean we, we don't debate with any person out there. On the one hand, they're saying that uh, the, pe the, the, the persons associated with al Islah are so significant that they have been having discussions with scholars late into night, late into the uh, nights, you know, until, I don't know, two in the morning, three in the morning. So be rest assured, a lot of work has been done behind the scenes. A lot of work has been done. We sat with scholars up to two at night. Zoom sessions, Adar Adar scholars, 18. Uh, so on the one hand, they're saying that we don't have debate with any person out there. On the other hand, this person out there is so significant that they are, last year they said that we organized a whole conference. And then this year also, there were claims that this conference is being organized to refute Al-Islah. And then they want to establish this whole uh, state of the art research institute just to refute uh, someone who is a nobody or who is an anybody. So many people found this disingenuous, but in any case, then he went on to say, so he says, we don't debate with any person out there. Uh, when you want to discuss, call for paper has come, present a paper. If you're academically qualified and uh, it qualifies for this event, present a paper. We don't debate with any person out there. When you want to discuss, the call of paper has come, present a paper. If you are academically qualified, it qualifies for this event. So Baba, this is not a response to our invitation because we were not uh, asking for us to be invited to a conference. Alhamdulillah, we have plenty of conferences going on at our own university, uh, which we have committed to, to attending. So it's not that we need uh, you know, conference certificate, okay, conference for participation, I mean, you know, uh, this is what we are looking for. No, uh, you are having a conference. Congratulations. He's, he mentioned that it is the first. It's the first time. Although I remember when, in, when we were in Dar es Salaam, we used to have many good seminars and conferences, Zakirin seminar. Uh, so I don't know in what sense he meant. Maybe he meant it's the first that, you know, World Federation and all these different organizations are coming together to organize. And that's a great thing, mashallah. We always support academic events. Yeah, so th these are his words. He said that is why in the in the 150 years of the Shia Isnashri community, this is an event that has never happened. So, okay. Uh, and But it is only the beginning. So, alhamdulillah, they have started and we congratulate them and we would definitely uh, wish them well. But Aslan, this is not a response to our invitation. We were not asking for you to invite us to present a research paper. We already know these people don't want to have us. They have already mentioned very clearly, even in this bayan, uh, Pramukh Saab referred to how they, their goal is to de-platform all reformist and revivalist voices. Anyone who wants to reform based on the Quran or revive the teachings of Ahlul Bayt والسلام, that are not popular, that are not in keeping with the tastes of the masses, they want to de-platform such people. And they, they, they want to claim that Ayatollah Sistani is the one who has ordered this. Although this is something we can, we have clarifications about this, inshallah, which we will make clear some other time. But right now, I just want to emphasize to those brothers who are telling me that your invitation has been responded to, a response natibana, a suche. This is not a response. This is, we said we want a one-to-one -one dialogue and debate and discussion on Zoom, where one or maybe two scholars or three scholars from your side, one, two or three scholars from our side, we come together, we sit together. If you don't want to make it too long, hi, I just bring one scholar from your side. And we gave the nominations, we gave the names. You bring one of those, we bring one of ours. They sit down together in the English language, they have respectful dialogue. They can come to common grounds on what things they can agree on so that the community knows, okay, traditional na reformist ma on these issues, agreement che. Ne a issues ma disagreement che. At least it will increase clarity in the minds of people. Okay, where is mahallun niza? You know, tahrir mahallun niza is very important. People sometimes don't even know. Okay, debate ne, ne difference of opinion 
શા માટે છે ને ને ઓન વોટ ઇશ્યુ ઇટ ઇઝ દેર ઓકે સો પીપલ હેવ ઓલ કાઇન્ડ ઓફ મિસકન્સેપ્શન્સ દેટ વિલ બી ડિસ્પેલ દે થિંક રિફોર્મિસ્ટ ઓર રિવાઇવલ સ્કોલર્સ આર નોટ ઓપરેટિંગ વિદિન ધ પેરાડાઇમ ઓફ ધ અહલુલ બૈત or that they are well ayadu billah anti ahlul bayt or they want to take people away from wilaya of ahlul bayt wal ayadu billah even though these are all shubuhat and misconceptions that we have previously refuted but khair so he's saying that we don't uh, we don't debate any person out there when you want to discuss call for paper has come so let me also clarify this call for paper that he's talking about um if you are serious in inviting somebody with your call for paper let me show you a sample because i have attended tons of seminars and conferences uh, that i have been invited to and this is how an invite looks like let me quickly share with you so this is a sample invite it's not rocket science when someone wants to specifically invite you to a conference they will send you an email and they say they address you with your full name dear dr sayed ali hur m kamunpuri uh, greetings from aligarh muslim university aligarh we have the pleasure to inform you the aligarh muslim university is celebrating its centenary year in 2020 as part of the celebration department of linguistics at amu is organizing a two day national conference on pedagogy of indian languages with special focus on heritage language teaching challenges issues and needs on march 14 to 15th uh, 2020 we invite abstracts on any area of the conference theme the brochure of this conference has been attached here with for your ready reference we also request you to circulate this information among your colleagues and students for larger participation you may also access the conference link at this link we seek your kind cooperation in making this special event a great success thank you warm regards they sign off and then they share with you the brochure which you can open and uh read to get a sense of what this event is going to be all about you know what the location will be uh, what the call for papers is what the concept note of the conference is uh what are the themes main key themes and sub themes that they will be discussing what are the submission guidelines what are the important dates publication all of that is included now obviously uh we did not receive any such invite um and uh, it, it's it's not surprising at all it's not surprising i mean uh, uh pramukh sahab has been very clear about how their goal is not to give it's to deplatform any reformist or revivalist voices that want to showcase and highlight teachings of ahlul bayt alayhi wassalatu wassalam that are not in line with popular taste with the taste of the awam and the popular masses so they don't want to allow platform to such individuals or such scholars or researchers or intellectuals and that's fine aslan we never said that you know invite us to your conference or give us your mimbar or anything of that sort we were simply saying that away from the mimbar and away from the traditional platforms uh, you can come to a joint platform have a a dialogue where both sides are represented so that if you feel that only al islah speakers will be allowed to speak then you know people will get misguided well you'll have traditional scholars to counter any uh, any falsehood any lie that is you know directed or attributed falsely to the ahlul bayt any wrong interpretation of the quran that is presented there will be a scholar from the other side to counter it and vice versa if they misuse or abuse or misapply any evidence there will be speakers from this side to counter that so this is what we were calling for one to one engagement on an online you know platform like zoom but the response that we are being given is that you know he's saying that okay come for a debate uh no no he's saying we don't debate with any person out there when you want to discuss call for paper has come present a paper well first of all the dialogue and debate that we wanted to have was on the issue of dua to ghayrullah okay not on uh what is it intellect and revelation which is the topic and theme of their conference so it's good you want to have discussion on those things but that's not the topic we wanted to engage on right we were inviting you for a debate and dialogue respectful one 
on the issue of this ghulu based practice of dua to ghayrullah which is going on in our communities and your traditional speakers are not doing enough in fact they're not doing anything to warn against it even though our imams of ahlul bayt and before them the quran has made it very clear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden this in surah mubarakah yunus wala tad'u min dunillahi ma la yanfa'uka wa la yadurruk fa in fa'alta Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing the Prophet, he says that do not invoke, do not make dua to any entity lesser than and other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which can neither benefit you nor harm you. And if you do so, you shall be among the valimi. But this zulm that Allah is condemning in this verse, it's rampant and widespread in our communities. Ya Ali Madad, Ya Sahib al Zaman Adrikni, dua tawassul, dua ilahi abm al bala which ends with you invoking Imam Ali and the Prophet and Sahib al-Zaman, all of which has been exposed by our own scholarship as being fabrications upon the Imams. We gave you the evidence in, in, in previous lectures. This is what we wanted to have engagement on. Uh, as far as the topic of reason and revelation, intellect and revelation and how to balance, yeah, we have, uh, we have already presented our research on this. What more do you want to say? If you look at uh, my CV, for example, uh, this is my CV. I've given a list of uh, research papers that I've presented in the past. Um, and you can see they're having, mashallah, this conference in 2023. Uh, but I've been presenting my research uh, since I was in the final year of my bachelor's program in 2011 is when I started presenting proper research papers. Uh, my first one was on stereotyping and manipulation of historical facts at the Mizan National Symposium that was organized by the University Literary Club. And then after that, uh, a research paper on translating sacred texts, ideological and semantic constraints to Quranic hermeneutics in the National Seminar on Issues and Challenges in Translation that was uh, held under the UGC DRS program at the Department of English at the Ali Muslim University, and then followed by a paper on examining the doctrine of the invocation of the name of God in Sufism that was organized by the Department and Institute of Islamic Studies. So basically a lot of conferences, I've, these are all research papers that I've been presenting um, in the last decade. So yes, uh, we had a research paper that I presented uh, on the international seminar on reason and religion. Way to Defeat Extremism, Contribution of India and Iran in Development of Kalam -e Jadid, with special reference to the role of Sir Sayyid as the founder of Kalam. This was organized by the Department of Shi'i uh, Theology at the Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh, between the 6th and 8th of September 2017. So we've already had uh, international seminars on reason and religion and how to navigate, you know, the dichotomies that exist between uh, a revelation-based approach, an intellect-based approach. Um, and there's so many other research papers. We have conferences and seminars, you know, all year round. So this is nothing new for us. Uh, it's good that they are having it for the first time, but we've been contributing to these events uh, for a very long time and we don't have any interest in, you know, uh, engaging or, or or doing more of the of the same kind of work that we've done in the past, right? We've presented enough res research papers. What we are calling for is a dialogue or a respectful debate, which has direct engagement with both sides, plus the opportunity to those in the audience to to ask questions, right? Um, and uh, unfortunately, because they have not responded to this uh, and instead they have opted to have a one-sided conference where the reformist revivalist side is not um, included. You can see what kind of feedback is coming. I'll just read out to you what one of the youths from Dar es Salaam wrote to me. He was very disappointed. I mean, Pramukh Saab was saying he's very happy 
and uh, we congratulate him for being happy, but are the youths happy? This is what one youth from Dar es Salaam sent me. He said that where is the effectiveness of this one-sided conference compared to a debate where all public would definitely be super interested to witness on the other hand? Do you think the majority Islahi youths will attend this conference? The youths are saying we're not happy uh, at the fact that they're having this one-sided conference. This conference is actually, now these are his words I'm quoting um, while maintaining his anonymity. He said this conference is actually a confidence stabilizing parade towards its Hoja citizens. It won't achieve its actual purpose of winning the lost hearts unless a real recorded debate takes place. Then both sides would pay heed. Islah youths would attend and traditional youths would attend, both youths and seniors who are away from each other. So far, it's just an ego boosting meeting. I personally feel that won't effectively and efficiently achieve its goals of establishing haq as advertised in front of all the public. This is attracting only those public who are already roughly with them. So I guess he's saying that, and then, yeah, he, he actually wrote, he said, do you think the majority of Islahi youths will attend this conference when it's one-sided? So there are a lot of youths in Dar es Salaam, in Dubai, around the world, in London, in Toronto, all of these places. So many of the youths have responded favorably to Al-Islah and they are convinced by all the researches that have been presented uh, via Al-Islah. So these youths are not going to be interested in a conference like this because it's you know one-sided. Uh, but if you were to make it two-sided and not a conference, but an actual head-to-head -head dialogue and debate and you know, direct engagement, then these youths would actually be interested in seeing, okay, uh, this is what Al-Islah is saying. This is what the traditional side is saying. Let's hear both sides and then make an informed decision. And then, uh, yeah, so this is the comment, you know, I mentioned before, he says that uh, any Hoja watching should understand ground realities, whether you are of, of the we don't debate with anybody, as Malim Safdar Jafar tauntingly put in. Even if you are anybody, if the community got influenced by you, then you are rather somebody special instead of anybody. You have caused them to erect such heavy conferences and programs and expenditures. All this, a result of a nobody, seems fishy fish. So basically he's saying, on the one hand, they say, oh, we don't debate anybody. But on the other hand, this anybody apparently is such a big somebody that, you know, they're, they're investing such huge resources to try and refute and respond. So he said, yeah, no one's going to fall for this. Plus, even if you are an anybody, why not accept the debate so they can crush you and make an example of you in front of the World Federation Jamaats and heal everyone's Iman back? Why you have to travel physically to their conference in Dar where violence occurred last time? He's talking about the Urban Rose unfortunate saga. Um, even though our beloved and respected Sheikh Ali Karmali in that meeting, he was so respectful, polite, academic. The moderator was also very extremely respectful, polite, academic. Obviously, in these kinds of events, you know, time has to be observed. You know, you're not allowed to hog the mic and, you know, give lectures during Q&A sessions. So the if the admin or if the volunteer was trying to, you know, enforce the time limits, uh, what was so wrong about that? But no, the, unfortunately, violence broke out and all of this. So basically, our youths don't seem to be very pleased with this. Um, and they are insisting that, uh, look, if they're serious, uh, these fancy conferences on topics that don't directly relate to the hulu that has become pervasive and widespread and rampant in our communities. These kinds of events are not going to achieve anything. And even setting up research institutes, Maulana, uh, some other time I will show you, the Ismailis also have a very powerful research institute. It's called the Institute of Ismaili Studies. It's based in London. They have publications. They have, go and visit their website. I will request Alisla admins, if possible, to also share their link to their, to the, 
uh, website. Very impressive publications. They talk about how they have, uh, in fact, why should I <laughs> bother Alisla admins? Let me try and show you myself because I know Alisla admins are very busy. I'm giving them a lot of work, but let me try and show it to you. Yeah. The Institute of Ismaili Studies. Yeah, you can see this is the Institute of Ismaili Studies. Okay, this is where Pramukh Saab was mentioning, right? In the beginning, Khojas used to be Ismailis. Well, Ismailis are still going strong. You can see this is the Institute of Ismaili Studies. They have research and publication, study, learning center, library and special collections, the Aga Khan Library, news, events, and in About Us. They mention how the Institute of Ismaili Studies, IIS, was established in 1977. Can you believe it? You guys are thinking of setting up a center in 2023, right? An institute. They were way ahead of you. In 1977, they already had their Institute of Ismaili Studies as an academic institution of higher education dedicated to the study of Islam with a particular focus on its Ismaili and broader Shi'i traditions. A core part of our mission is to preserve and study the intellectual and literary heritage of these traditions. We harness, look at this, we harness the extensive expertise of our own scholars. So, you know, they keep on repeatedly saying that, you know, in our conference, I'm talking about the World Federation, if you, will, you know, at this conference, we have experts, expertise, experts, scholars, mujtahid. Yeah, Baba, everyone has, even those whom you consider completely deviant, Kabisa Gumra, yeah, even see, they are also boasting that we harness the extensive expertise of our own scholars, as well as those of partner institutions to foster collaborative research and to identify and address pressing ethical and intellectual questions faced by Muslim communities around the world. And so you can see Maulana, it's a very impressive website in terms of, from a worldly perspective, it's very impressive. But my dear brothers and sisters, and there are the, these Ismailis, they claim to be followers of the Ahlul Bayt. Huh? Look, they say the second largest Shia Muslim community in the world. The Ismailis are settled in over 25 countries across Asia, Africa, Middle East, Europe, North America, Australia. They are all over the place. And they have this fancy research institute. But Mulana, when their supreme merger is cancelling and abrogating the Quran, and he's telling them, Namaz nati parwani. You don't need to pray salah. You don't need to fast. Fast. In fact, he's changing the whole definition of fasting and saying, fasting, which the Quran says, does not. Yeah, the correct interpretation the Imam will give you, and the Imam is the Aga Khan, and his interpretation is that fasting is taqiyya. You hide your beliefs from the rest of the Muslims. That is fasting. So when Allah says, Ya ladina amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyam, fasting has been prescribed. Yeah, the Imam has said that fasting means you observe taqiyya with the rest of the Muslims, Mawlan. So he's also uh, emerging as far as they are concerned. They have their, and their experts and scholars and professors, even as far as Harvard, who actually subscribe to his imamate. They believe in him as the imam and they promote him as the imam. And they have a fancy research institute. But all of this, Sufi Dochiano, Abadu, all of this, you think it will it will benefit when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran has said, وَإِنَّهُ لَذِكْرٌ لَكَ وَلِقَوْمِكَ وَسَوْفَ تُسْأَلُونَ This Quran, O Prophet, is my reminder to you and to your people. It's my reminder. وَسَوْفَ تُسْأَلُونَ And you shall be questioned about it. يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ When Allah opens the Quran in front of them and says, Baba, I told you أَقِنِ الصَّلَىٰ I told you أَتُ zakah. I told you istighatha. They also believe in, by the way. And their academics, they defend istighatha. And Allah will show them all the verses. On the Day of Judgment, Allah can open the Quran, show them all the verses which forbid istighatha to ghayrullah, and which show you that the Prophet's own community, when they were under the Prophet, in Suratul Anfal, go and read Suratul Anfal, opening passages when Allah talks about the Battle of Badr, when the Muslim community is in crisis, they do istighatha. Allah talks about their istighatha. But who is their istighatha directed to? Imam Ali salam, was physically there at that time. Did they direct the istighatha to Imam Ali? Did they direct the istighatha to the Prophet? Allah testifies in the Quran. Huh? This is not some hadith that I have to bring you authentication from Rijal. No. Allah testifies. Is tastaghithuna rabbakum fastajabalakum anni mumiddukum bi alfim min al-malak. 
Remember when you did istighatha from who? Rabbakum. You did istighatha from your love, Rabb, from your sustainer. So the Quran shows you istighatha is supposed to be done from the Rabb, the one who sustains you. The Prophet, the Ahlul Bayt who were at Badr and the Muhajirin and Ansar who were at Badr. All of them collectively did istighatha with to whom? They directed their istighatha to the Rabb, not to the slaves. Not to Ibrahim or Ishaq or Yaqub or any of the past pious personalities. So when Allah puts all this evidence in front of them on the Day of Judgment. Now of course, do you think it will benefit them on the Day of Judgment to say in front of Allah that no, 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 ya Allah, ya Allah, wait, this Quran that you are opening, keep it to yourself. Because we had an institute of higher research which was harnessing the extensive expertise of our own scholars, as well as those of partner institutions to foster collaborative research. So we had such big institutes. We had a living Imam who was our Quran, but he never told us what, what today these verses of the Quran that you're opening and confronting us with, yeah, they never shared this guidance with us. So don't you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, then what did I give you this Quran for? And how are you then different from the Jews and Christians whom I condemned in verse 31 of surah number 9 for blindly following their scholars even when their scholars went against my scripture. So who at that point do you think it will benefit them to, to boast in front of Allah and say no but Allah, ya Allah we had our experts and our experts was telling us that abadu kilakitu is okay. Istighatha be okay. We don't pray namaz it's okay. We don't fast it's okay. So that is as far as they are concerned. In our communities, alhamdulillah, after the reform, uh, we had partial reform in the sense that before as Khojas, you are not praying, you are not fasting. Then what happened? Your elders translated the Quran and you read the Quran yourself. You saw Allah said, Aqim is salah, atu zakah. So you started establishing the prayer. You started fasting, alhamdulillah. But the Quran doesn't end at this. There are other things Allah has mentioned in the Quran, like prohibition of istighatha to ghayrullah. Prohibition of dua to Ghayrullah, which we've been warning about. If Allah brings out those ayat, you think it will help you? If you stand up in on the day of judgment and say, Allah, but I had research institute and we had federation, hatine, ahatine, all, all of, even though we have, and, and marja'iyat, hatu marja'iyat, half of marja'iyat we showed you. There are There is a camp within marja'iyat who has already warned you against this. And another half, we showed you the problem. Go and refer to our lecture on why maraji are silent. They will, It's not that they don't recognize these things are wrong, but they are scared to confront the public with stuff that they don't like because they know that the public then becomes crazy. So at the end of the day, Maulana, you can set up research institutes. That's a very good thing. To be honest, I would also love for Al-Islah, if they have, they're obviously a, they're a very small group and they have very minimal resources. Uh, but if I, if you were to ask me, I believe Al-Islah should have a research institute, a full-fledged research institute, inshallah. If that is, uh, if that becomes a, uh, a reality, so many of our bichara traditional scholars who are living in taqiyya and who are having to preach against what they believe and they are not able to preach their conscience, so many of these scholars will be able to join this institute work full-time as scholars, get paid also, and at the same time, promote what they consider to be haqq. So, to be honest, we need more research institutes. I will never say that we, we don't need research institutes. But if these research institutes are not promoting the haqq, if they're not presenting to the public what the original teachings of the Ahlul Bayt are, then faido suche. On the Day of Judgment, you will not be allowed to hide behind any research institute. You will not be allowed to hide behind any marjir, any expert, any scholar. Allah is saying, Inna la laka wa li I gave you the dhikr. I gave you the reminder. And my reminder is Allah says, Walaqad yassarna al-Qur'an al dhikr This Qur'an has been simplified and made easy so that people should be able to remember it. So don't listen to those who are telling you, yes, there are mutashabihat, there are ayat, which are talking about advanced realities of ghayb and things like that. Who is who is asking you to go into those? We are talking simple ayat of the Quran that talk about the bayinat of the Quran. That talk about tawheed, that say you should only worship Allah. You should only seek 
Isti'ana and istighatha from Allah across ghaib and not other entities. These are not advanced, complicated rocket science verses. So, when Allah opens these verses in front of you, phir kya hoga? Then what will you do? Su kar so kame. So that's why very respectfully, humbly, gently, this is a call and an invitation to all our community members and also the leadership to think about these things. You know, thandet dil se aap sochye and aap ye samajye and understand that look, within Shia scholarship, there are great, grand level maraje and I will, I'll, I will refer to them inshallah. They have warned you against the, these Gulu based practices. We have previously shared a lot of their testimonies. We can share more testimonies. If you ignore them, then who is to blame? But in the end, and to conclude, because Pramukh Saab wants a paper, and these are his words, he said, we don't debate with any person out there. When you want to discuss, call for paper has come, present a paper. So, okay, I'm going to present a paper. Well, not a paper exactly. I'm going to present to you one chapter from Al-Kafi with food for thought containing uh, guidance about the topic that we originally wanted to have the discussion on. Inshallah, that presentation will reach you soon. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ جَمِيعًا وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ